Hello everybody, my name is Alex and welcome to a breakdown of the Ethiopia Civ in Civ 6. Now I've not had very long to do this, I'm a bit rushed this evening, but I've got some interesting facts that they didn't necessarily mention directly in the trailer and I just broke down the bonuses, so let's get into it. So in Civ 6, Menelik II leads Ethiopia, and we already kind of knew this from the trailer we got, or the developer update we got the other day, because they put it in there. I don't know why they keep kind of sneaking that stuff in, so it kind of spoils it, but we already knew. And if you want to find out more about uh, Menelik II, I'll be doing an historical analysis on pretty much all of the Civs, so the unique unit, unique building, and Menelik, just so we have more of an idea of the historical context, and I'll get that video out in the next few days. Ethiopia's unique ability is called Uxuomite Legacy. Its cities earn extra faith from resources, boosted even further when international trade routes originate from resource-rich cities. The Empire can also purchase archaeological museums and archaeologists with faith. So yeah, Ethiopia's unique ability is that cities earn extra faith from resources, and this is boosted even further when international trade routes originate from resource-rich cities. So I tried to break down some of the facts here. Um, so firstly, the city we saw on the um, trailer had plus five from resources. So as we can see, there's five resources, and that means that for each strategic or luxury resource in a city, you're going to be getting an additional faith, which is pretty cool. Now the second part of this, which is the trade route, which means um, you get an extra faith from international trade routes that leave from your city, uh, means that you're going to get 0.5 extra faith per trade route per resource. So, for example, in the city like we just said, and um, there's five extra resources, so there's five either strategic or luxury resources, that means that a trade route from that city to an international city will bring in a further 2.5 faith. So overall, this is kind of setting the tone of what Ethiopia is. It's predominantly a religious faith sieve, and, and these bonuses are going to help you generate more faith than your rivals. However, the second part to Ethiopia's bonus is that the Empire can also purchase archaeological museums and archaeologists with this faith. So what it means is that you can basically switch from a religious victory if it's not going so well for you to a tourism victory, a culture victory. And as we go on through the other bonuses, you'll see that what Ethiopia is, is it's a save where you're going to start off trying to produce as much faith as possible. But if you get to the later game, you can definitely switch this to a tourism victory if your game requires you to do that. Menelik's ability is called Council of Ministers. He gets extra culture and science based on his faith output in cities founded on hills. His units also get extra combat strength when fighting on hills. Ethiopia's focus is on a defensive, religious, and culture-centered game. Claim hill tiles early for your cities. The Council of Ministers ability can keep Ethiopia well-rounded even as you try to maximize the amount of faith you are producing. So you can split this leader ability up into two parts. So the first bit is that Menelik cities receive science and culture equal to 15% of his faith generation in cities founded on hills. Now overall, I really like this bonus. It helps transform Ethiopia not just into a religious sieve, which all the faith bonuses make it, but it also helps make it a more well-rounded sieve. If you do well in what you should do well in, i.e. faith, you should then have the ability to do well in science and culture. And science and culture are massive aspects of Civ 6, as I'm sure you know. Now the only thing is with this bonus, which I have a slight concern about, is that it does require your cities to be built on hills. Basically knowing that those science and culture bonuses are there for you if you build your city on a hill is going to make you found it on a hill and that just kind of worries me a little bit. Am I going to be throwing away better settlement locations just for the science and culture bonuses? Now, it probably won't make too much difference, but it's just something, you know, I'd have to think about because I don't want to get too dragged into making sure every single city is on a hill, but overall, like I said, I'm very, very positive about that, and I like how they've tried to do something um, a tiny bit different there. Now, the second part of this bonus is that Menelik's units get plus four combat strength when fighting on hills, which I think, especially in the early game, is a really nice bonus. Now, obviously, just as with the kind of other half of this bonus, the 15% bonus science and culture, it does rely on you fighting a lot in hills. But Ethiopia is almost certainly going to have a start bias with lots of hills. So defending your civilization 
will be made a whole lot easier with this. Now obviously as the game progresses it's not going to be as effective but a plus 4 combat strength bonus fighting on hills I think it's good and like I said Ethiopia should have a lot of hilly terrain so it's going to make you quite a formidable opponent to anybody that wants to invade you and that's what Menelik did a lot of. Obviously Ethiopia well remembered for avoiding colonization and invasion up until the 1930s. Ethiopia's tile improvement, the rock-hewn church, can only be built on hills or volcanic soil. And multiple churches can't be built adjacent to each other. It provides faith and extra faith from adjacent mountains and hills. They can only be pillaged and not destroyed by natural disasters. Once you research flight, rock -hewn churches also produce tourism. So moving on to talk about the unique tile improvement. First of all, I just want to say I absolutely love this. I think it's quite iconic and it will definitely stand out on the map. I think it looks absolutely great. And I, I am actually looking forward to doing some research on it and finding some, some more stuff out. But onto the bonuses. So the main bonus is that this tile improvement provides additional faith just for building it and then it provides faith for every single mountain or hill tile which is adjacent. So I think this can kind of mean that I think on the trailer we saw about plus six faith was being made by one of these so it can be quite the nice faith maker. And obviously that's first and foremost good for faith and if you're going for a religious victory Ethiopia is going to be strong just because you're making a lot of faith. But if you think about that 15% science bonus, 15% culture bonus for cities which are founded on hills, it's going to help make Ethiopia a really well-rounded sieve because you're going to be strong in a number of areas just for having good faith. Now, the only thing I would say on this and that needs to be noted is that it, they're not so easy to build. So first and foremost, you have to build them on either a hill or volcanic tile, I believe. So... That could be a bit difficult, but again, remember that Ethiopia is going to have a start bias towards hills, so it, it won't be too bad. And the second thing is you cannot build them adjacent to each other. But overall, I'm not really worried about them, I just think they're going to be a nice faith maker. Another brilliant thing about this unique tile improvement though, is that if you get to the late game and discover flight then it will help make tourism. So it makes a certain amount of tourism related to how much faith you are making. Now what makes this so good is that it just shows that Ethiopia can be a very versatile sieve. Yes, you're going to go out from turn one and probably uh, aim for a religious victory. You're going to aim to make as much faith as possible. But if that's not working out, you can sort of recycle all of that faith and we've talked about this with other bonuses, you can recycle that faith and head for a tourism or culture victory. So I think it's really nice and makes Ethiopia possibly more dynamic than many of the other civs. Ethiopia's unique unit is the Oromo Cavalry. This cavalry unit replaces the Courser. It has better combat strength and sight than the Courser and receives no movement penalty from moving on hills. So now let's talk about the unique um, unit, which is a medieval light cavalry replacement for the Corsair. Now I like this on a number of levels, and just to start off with, I think it's going to be quite good for keeping your city safe. So what is it? Well, it's, like I said, a replacement for the Corsair, but the difference is, is that this unit has 46 melee strength, whereas the Corsair only has 44. Now, that doesn't sound very much, and it's not very much, but, you know, I still appreciate any advantage in this way, so I'd rather have the two extra melee points than not have them. But I guess where that gets stronger is when you think about you're going to be using this as a defensive unit. You're going to be using it in the terrain of Ethiopia. And when you remember that Menelik's units get plus four combat strength for fighting on hills, suddenly you've got a unit which has a 50 combat strength rather than a 44. So that's going to put you in a very strong position for defending your homelands. Now, there is a bit more to this as well. So the unit also gets no movement penalties from moving within hills. So you, you can definitely see that this is aimed to be defensive. But what I really like about this is that since I played as Grand Columbia, I've started to appreciate how much, uh, how, how important movement is. Having more movement with units like cavalry allows you to put your enemies at a real strategic disadvantage. And being able to move across hilly terrain and do that way, your enemies are going to be slow, are going to take time to move. It allows you to, to really gain the upper hand. So overall, having that extra combat strength to start with, having that extra combat strength from the unique leader bonus, 
and having the extra movement points, which is five movement points across um, hill terrain as well, this is going to be very good unit for defending Ethiopia from invaders, and it just shows Ethiopia is going to be a defensive sieve. So overall, I am quite looking forward to trying out this new civilization. I really do like the fact that it's quite versatile in the way that it's giving you bonus science and culture as well as faith. And also that in the later game, you can switch from a faith victory or a religious victory to a tourism victory. It gives you that option, which I think is really cool. Anyway, what do you think? Make sure you let me know down in the comments. I'll bring you some history on this civ over the weekend so you can learn about the leader, learn about the... All the unique unit, all that good stuff, and how they actually operated in real life. So I'm looking forward to making that video. And yeah, thank you for watching. Thank you so much for watching this video today. If you want to see another one of our Civilization 6 videos, make sure you click on the box below to learn more about secret societies. If you have enjoyed this video, please do remember to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and share this video with a friend. Thank you for watching. My name is Alex, and I will see you in another video soon.